In this video, we're going to learn how to use a full circle protractor. And the first thing I'd like to do is to introduce you to the full circle protractor. And you'll see here at the center of our um, screen is the full circle protractor, which measures all the way from 0 to 360 degrees. So the first thing that we're going to learn about is that um, the protractor itself has a center. And it's uh, right there in the center of the protractor with a little dot in the center. Uh, the first thing that we can do with a protractor is uh, measure angles. And we're familiar with angles because that's what we learned about in the first uh, unit of the year. Uh, here we have a an angle, angle C. And we are asked to use our full circle protractor to measure each angle. So first we're going to measure angle C. And we know that um, angle C has something very special right there, and that is the vertex. The vertex is the end point where two rays meet. Um, so right there, we've got vertex for angle C. It's helpful when we measure angles to know which side is the starting side to our angle. And we take a close look at our angle, and we can see that there's a blue arrow. And the blue arrow is starting from the left side of our angle, and falling to the right side. So we know that that left side of our angle is what we call the starting side. So it's really important that we remember when we measure angles that we need to start with the starting side of our angle. And again, all we do is look at what side the arrow is starting with. So here's our jingle. Put the center on the vertex, clap your hands. Put the center on your vertex, clap your hands. Put the center on the vertex and zero on the starting side. Put the center on the vertex, clap your hands. So I know that was rather cheesy, but here's what we did. We used the song to remember that it's important that we put the center of our protractor on the vertex. Right there. Next, we made sure that we put zero on the starting side, the starting side of our angle. And when we lined up the zero with the starting side, we saw that the second, the finishing side finished at 60 degrees. Finished at 60 degrees. So we know that our measure is 60 degrees for angle C. Again, if we put the center on our vertex, I'll sing again. Put the center on the vertex, clap your hands. Put the center on the vertex, clap your hands. Put the center on the vertex and zero on the starting line. Put the center on the vertex, clap your hands. Again, double check that your vertex hasn't moved and ensure that zero is on the starting line. And then again, check and see where the ending line Remember, this is our starting line, and there's our ending line. And it's important that we take a close look and say, where is our end line, end line passing through? Our end line seems to be passing through 120 degrees. So we know that the measure of angle D is 120 degrees. Okay, it's cheesy, but are you ready to sing with me? Come on, sing with me. Here we go. Put the center on your vertex, clap your hands. Put the center on your vertex, clap your hands. Put the center on the vertex and zero on the starting line. Put the center on the vertex. Clap your hands. So again, make sure that the center is on your vertex. Line up your zero with your starting line. And then again, we take a look finally at our ending line. Where does our, where does our, uh, our angle end? And what line does it pass through on our protractor? We see that here, the measure of angle F is 150 degrees because it passes through at 150 degrees on our protractor. Let's take a look at a more challenging problem over here on the right which is mentioned with try this. Problem number four. What is the measure of angle E? Well it's important for us to take a look which side is the starting side. We see our vertex here but which side is our starting side? We see that our starting side is the right side and actually rotates around the outside of the angle. 
So what, what or what appears to be the outside. So again, if we know our song, we line up the center with our vertex, and we make sure that zero is on the starting side. Again, make sure that the center is on the vertex, and then we measure. We start with the starting side and measure right around. The arrow helps us follow all the way around. And we see what line, we ask ourselves, what line is the ending line passing through on our protractor? And right there, if I look closely, that looks like about 310 degrees. And that's what we get from measure of angle E, 310 degrees. The second thing that we can do when we use a protractor is use a protractor to actually draw angles. Not just measure them, but draw them. So we start with a protractor and we start with a dot. You can see the dot near the center of the page here. And next we use a straight edge. Don't drive your teacher crazy. Make sure that you use a straight edge. Do not freehand this. And we draw a ray. And if we wanted to draw an angle that measured in 60 degrees, we draw a ray and we again line the center of our protractor up with the vertex or the end point of a ray. And then we look at our protractor and we try to find where 60 degrees is. And we know that 60 degrees is right there marked in blue. So we'll take our straight edge, we'll start with the end point, and we're going to go straight through that 60 degree mark that we made. And again, we're going to use a straight edge to not drive your teacher crazy. Um, and then we recognize that we just drew an angle that is 60 degrees. Again, we can use this same method, we can double check uh, by putting our protractor back on there, the center on the vertex, and zero on the starting side, and we see that 60 degrees, our line passes directly through 60 degrees, taking a glance at making sure that our zero is lined up with our starting side. Use this to draw any angle um, up to 360 degrees. I hope that you guys enjoyed and uh, hopefully learned two important uh, uh, ways that we can use a protractor. Thanks.